What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had taken a COVID test, hopefully, you have tested negative. If you did test positive for COVID, flu, or any other viruses, I hope you do have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID and no long term issues. It is time now for the Sunday edition of the virus update for Sunday, January 19th, 2025. If you're new to my channel, Welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make you sick. And let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there. Hey, one of the viruses got me this winter, COVID. I was sick with COVID, and then before that, a mystery virus. For about a month's period, I just was not feeling well. So, yes, these viruses can hit you when they least expect it. And they can sometimes not just be a 24, 48-hour thing. They can end up being a long-term thing, which kind of... What happened to me back during the holidays? Anywho, want to stay informed with what's going on with these viruses? Just subscribe down below. We're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers this year to inform as many people as possible. Of course, give this a thumbs up if you liked the video. Let's try for 200 like button hits today. I don't know if we'll be able to do it. Who knows? And of course, share this video with anyone you know. Hit the notification bell and leave your comments down below. Alrighty, today we are going to take a look at uh, just a few news stories. Yes, we actually have a lighter news day for once. Then we're going to take a look at some of the data we usually look at daily. Uh, maybe a little bit of a recap from some of the data that came in Friday. And then we'll spend at least a second half, if not more, on uh, wastewater today. So I don't think this is going to go over 20 minutes today because I really don't have a lot of news for you. So starting off with the news in uh, Toronto. Health officials sound the alarm about a rise in respiratory illness among children. Yes, this is not good. COVID, flu, RSV, all, you know, all those viruses, uh, influenza A, are all circulating right now in schools. And, you know, if something circulates in school, you send your child to school, they have to come home. So good chance it may start spreading in households as well. And get this, Toronto Public Health says it recorded over 500 and 70 cases of influenza, and a nearly 11% uh, COVID-19 positivity rate. And taking a look real quickly at what's going on with the rates in Canada, COVID-19 is currently listed at moderate, flu A is high, flu B is high, RSV is also in high circulation at this time. Taking a look at this, we do have some measles news. For the first time since 2013, there is a case of measles in Rhode Island. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, relatively concerning. We've already been seeing some uh, measles cases this year, and I decided, you know what, let's just start up a U.S. measles tracking thread since there have already been measles cases. So if I see them, I'll post it there. I don't think I'm going to do an international one, or at least as of yet. There's been a, quite a few international cases, so I would already be too far behind it. Plus, we've started quite a few different tracking threads on the site. It's beginning to become too much to add more, but this one I felt, you know what, yeah, we need to track measles because uh, last year saw an increase in measles. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with measles this year. You know, there was the case in Alaska and two cases, I believe, in the Houston metro area. So we'll have to see what comes of this because all these cases so far have had potential exposure. So we'll just have to see what happens happens with this uh not much else to talk about on the website reminder we do have the u.s sports illness thread there's also an international one but the u.s one yeah get this between postings and commentary it's already on page five and we're not even through the month of january i would be pretty darn well shocked if this doesn't go 20 25 pages by the end of the year once football season ends once basketball season ends which has a ways to go yet it should slow down but even at that there have been a lot of uh, illness in basketball. There's been a lot of illness with the Milwaukee Bucks and the Chicago Bulls. So uh, that is not good whatsoever. And then we just saw University of Minnesota Duluth hockey team. They're dealing with a flu outbreak. And because of that, well, part of the reason why they lost against Ohio State University on Saturday. So, yeah, that is uh, something that uh, obviously I'm keeping an eye on all these different illnesses. Speaking of illnesses. Have you gone on a cruise or have you considered going on a cruise? 
I would assume many of my followers are not considering going on a cruise, but you know what? Researchers are calling for better airflow in cruise ships, dining areas to help prevent disease outbreaks. And you know what? I would take it one step further. I've learned something over the past uh, couple of years. I hate to admit this. I don't... Um, I would never go on a cruise or anything, but, you know, I have family members that say, oh, it's okay. Now, they didn't go on a big cruise, but they went on one about, when was this, 20, December 2023? Anywho, the point is they came back. My dad came back with COVID. The point that I'm trying to get across here is some of these smaller cruise ships do not even have medical staff on board. I did not know that until that happened. That is utterly ridiculous. Do these big Cruise ships have medical staff? I honestly, I don't know because cruises are just not my thing. But the point is, they don't take health very seriously on these cruises. And one little ounce of norovirus, COVID or something, and it just rips through the entire cruise ship. And a high number of people get sick really quick. And now they have Icon of the Seas, which holds thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, it's not my cup of tea. Let me know down below. Would you consider going on a cruise ship? I think most people are just going to say no. All right, moving on. In the UK this past week, uh, flu has been starting to drop, as has COVID, which is a really good thing. But COVID, it never really went up all that much there, and it's not dropping from a very high level. In fact, the COVID level in the UK is actually lower than many what many of the states in the United States reported in the past week. So COVID really wasn't that bad in the UK this year, but as we all know, one new variant could change that at a moment's notice. Taking a look at what is going on with air qualities and still really bad air qualities in the West and some bad air qualities in the East as well, I suspect uh, fireplaces are going to be going over the next several days. There's a couple things that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, generally, east of the Rockies, just straight on through to the East Coast, really cold weather is coming. Hyperthermia and frostbite are going to be a thing. There'll probably be an increase of that in emergency departments. And plus, there is a winter storm ongoing in the Northeast. Please, if you're going out to shovel snow, take it easy. Uh, some places closer to the 95 corridor, it's going to be that heavier, wet snow. So if you're someone that has a heart problem, or maybe it's long COVID or something else, uh, get someone else to do the shoveling for you. And down in the Southeast, there's going to be some wintry weather this week and dangerous cold. Uh, the combination, that's going to keep people indoors, but also, you're not equipped to handle the snow and ice, so that's going to create problems for your roads, and yes, increased accidents, more pressure on the emergency department. See where I'm going with that, but I'm very concerned about all these people that are going to be cooped up inside from the cold. Uh, Florida, it's going to be so cold there that right now is usually when you're outside and in summertime you're indoors. Right now, people are going to be cooped up inside. It's going to be interesting to see if that does anything for these viruses. Speaking of Florida, Pinellas County, Florida, we're seeing quite a few sick person calls. One, two, three, four sick person calls right now. Uh, stroke, unconscious person, chest pain, breathing problems. Yeah, busy there right now. Philadelphia yesterday had 789 EMS incidents. And currently in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, 12 EMS calls right now. One for respiratory and a few other things. Seeing vehicle accident. To be expected, we're having a winter storm here right now. I can hear the sleep pellets actually hitting my window at the moment, which is uh, never a good thing. It means it's getting icy out there. Taking a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania, we see there are a few calls, heart problems, respiratory difficulties, stroke. I would expect to see heart problem calls the next 24 to 36 hours, anywhere that's getting this storm, go up because, you know, people that's should not be out there shoveling snow who have a heart condition or something or maybe breathing problems, yeah, it, the places that see the wetter snow, you know, closer to the coast, yeah, that's going to be a problem for you. Even the places that see the lighter snow, if you're shoveling, picking up too much at a time, that could be problematic. Remember to take frequent breaks if you are shoveling snow. Taking a look at Pennsylvania. I actually have some good news here. Take a look at the hospital situation. Uh, not as many yellow hospitals. Yes, this is an improvement. Still some that are dealing with problems, but not as many. And New Jersey, as of last check, let's refresh this. Uh, New Jersey is not doing bad today. Just one hospital right now is dealing with a patient volume problem, and that is Cooper University Hospital, which is doing a total divert at the moment. 
Everywhere else is fine. So Cooper University Hospital in Candom, New Jersey is dealing with a problem. It's Wastewater Sunday. We got to review Pennsylvania again. The only place rising on the map is in Center County in the State College area at this time in Pennsylvania. Everywhere else is listed at dropping or no change at this time. Now, when you look at some of the charts, a few of them are starting to rise once again, but uh, not many of them at this time. Walgreens this week, 13.2% positivity rate was reported for COVID. Taking a look at what's going on with the latest COVID variant in the United States, XEC is at 47%, LP 8.1 is at 15%, KP.3.1.1 is at 14% at this time. And KP.3.1.1 was an older variant. We're watching to see if LP.8 tries to give XEC a run for its money. We'll have to see if it does. It could eventually take over. Or something else comes along. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right. Taking a look at emergency department visits in the United States. And for the most part, they are dropping pretty much all around the United States. There's National, Alabama's dropping, Alaska is dropping, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware is just starting to drop, Washington, D.C. is dropping, Florida is dropping, Georgia was dropping, and it still is slightly, but that drop has slowed off slightly. That's something we'll have to watch, both Florida and Georgia, because it's going to be really cold there, especially Florida. Like I said, people that usually go outside may not necessarily be outside. Guam is dropping. Hawaii, take a look at this. Actually seeing a little bit of a rise at this time. Idaho is dropping. Illinois, Indiana, Iowa dropping. Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, all dropping at this time. Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Mississippi, Montana dropping at this time. Nebraska is dropping. Nevada was dropping, then it started going back up again. Now it's starting to drop again. New Hampshire is dropping. New Jersey was dropping, but take a look real close. It has actually slowed off in New Jersey. Though it is still dropping, it's not dropping as fast. New Mexico is still dropping. New York is still dropping. North Carolina is still dropping. North Dakota, we'll say that's still dropping. It has slowed a little bit. Ohio has peaked and is dropping. Oregon is dropping. Thankfully, Pennsylvania is dropping because Pennsylvania is doing really bad when it comes to hospitalizations. Rhode Island is still dropping. South Carolina is dropping. South Dakota, Tennessee... Texas, Utah, Vermont is dropping, Virginia is dropping, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, yeah, Wisconsin, you know what, that may have slowed off a little bit, and Wyoming, nothing to report, and of course, as always, Missouri, nothing, did we miss anywhere else that was not listed on here, I honestly do not know, uh, did we say New Mexico, I don't think we did, New Mexico is not listed in here either, I wish we would have uh, more states on here. Arizona is listed, though. Taking a look at what's going on with a emergency department, or taking a look at what's going on with hospital, no, this is not hospital capacity, epidemic trends. And we do see COVID-19 is likely declining or declining everywhere, with exceptions to Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Wyoming, and Hawaii, which did not report for whatever, although Texas is reporting not changing. Taking a look at what's going on with flu, and in some places, flu is growing and likely growing once again. And then in a few other places, it's likely declining or is declining, which, again, as I stated on Friday, really doesn't make all that much sense because if it's uh, increasing again in some places, well, then why in those same states did influenza-like activity drop on this map? That 1 plus 1 is not equaling 2 in this case, but what do I know? I mean, it's the CDC. We're in the middle of a transition, so... That could be screwing up the data. Transmission. Transition meaning to a new uh, presidential administration. Alrighty, let's take a look at some wastewater data from Wastewater Scan. And we'll also take a look at the, uh, the CDC page as well. And then we will call a day. I don't have much more for you, but we do need to take a look at some wastewater sites. So we'll do nationally, we'll do each region, and then within each region, maybe we'll do one wastewater site. Nationally for COVID, dropping at this time. Even if you take away that wonky movement, I do think it is starting to drop. It was dropping, then it went back up again, but I think this is going to correct to dropping. We'll see. RSV at this time is starting to drop. Influence A is maybe starting to peak and drop. Influenza B is dropping. That's multiple updates. HMPV is low, and everything else is finally dropping. Norovirus, though still high, is now dropping. Taking a look in the Midwest, and in the Midwest, we do see there's a wonky movement at the end. X that out. What do you get? A peak. 
things are starting to drop for COVID. RSV is high at this time, and uh, take that wonky movement out. It has peaked. Influence A is high. Influence B is low. HMPV is low. Norovirus is dropping. It's very high, but still needs to drop a lot more. Now let's take a look at an individual wastewater site. And how about we go to South Bend, Indiana, and see what's going on there. But before we do that, we need to take our hydration break. We forgot to do that yesterday. Today's choices were drink, drinking juice. But please, if you just had COVID, or even if you haven't, make sure you uh, drink plenty of water and liquids throughout the day. Always keep yourself hydrated. Dehydration is a real problem. So let's take that hydration break now. Alrighty, moving on to South Bend, Indiana, and we can see here that things for COVID, they're still pretty high, but they are dropping. If this continues to drop like this, maybe it'll switch to medium soon. RSV is actually rising a little bit again. Influenza A is still rising. Influenza B is low. HMPV and norovirus is still listed high at this time. And taking a look at hepatitis A, there have been some detections. No detections of MPOX at this time. In the Northeast, we see that COVID at this time is high but dropping. RSV is dropping. Influenza A still high. Uh, influenza B is low. HMPV is low. And norovirus is high but starting to drop at this time. Today, let's go up to Newark, New Jersey, shall we? Let's see what's going on there. And we do see COVID. Uh, it does look like it was starting to drop, but it looks like uh, it's in wonky movement mode here. So uh, that's not all that accurate at this time. I would suspect maybe if this corrects, it's going to start to show dropping. RSV is high at this time, dropping a little bit. Influenza A is still rising here. Influenza B is still high. HMPV is still high. Uh, norovirus at this time is still high. Hepatitis A, some detections of that. And I should add in here that um, New Jersey, we saw with the... Uh, Emergency department visits that it was slowing off a little bit, so maybe uh, maybe that is still rising up there in Newark. Remember, that is a huge wastewater site. In the south, COVID, it's corrected here on this chart. It is now dropping, which is some good news. RSV is high, starting to drop. Influenza A is still less that high, and uh, some walkie movements there, so I can't really figure where that's going. Hopefully, it will start dropping. Influenza B is low, HMPV, and norovirus is running high at this time, and Based on this, it may even be rising even higher. That would not be a good thing whatsoever. Let's come down to Miami, Florida. We have not taken a look in the Miami area in a long time. Let's see what's going on there. COVID is low. RSV is high. Influenza A is high. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. Norovirus still listed high. A lot of detections of hepatitis. I don't know if that's correct or not. But, uh, yeah, interesting to see that many hepatitis detections. Now let's go out to the West Coast. And on the West Coast, we find that COVID is kind of bouncing around all over the place. It had peaked, it had dropped, and now it's not really dropping that much. RSV had peaked, uh, and we'll see. There's a wonky movement here. We'll see how that corrects. I hope it stays at peaking and then starts to drop. Influenza A is peaking. Disregard the wonky movement. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. And norovirus at this time is dropping. Let's do one wastewater site on the West Coast. And let's come down to L.A. Why not? Uh, prayers to everyone who's impacted by the fires in L.A. I really hope things get better for you soon. COVID is low. RSV listed high. Influenza A. And influenza B listed high. Not many problems with norovirus or the other viruses. Uh, norovirus listed at medium at this time. It is rising slightly. Hepatitis A, a lot of detections of that. Alrighty, quickly coming over to the CDC for COVID, and we can see in all regions, COVID has peaked at this time. We'll take a look at some of the other viruses and maybe some state-by-state -state looks at the CDC tomorrow if it's not a busy news day. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Sunday edition of the Virus Update. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. Let's again try for 200 like button. Hits today. Share this video with anyone you know. Subscribe if you're new down below. Trying for 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, ways to support the channel are listed down below. Of course, leave your comments and hit that notification bell. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone and have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. Thanks for watching.